Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another early, fresh look, courtesy of my friends over at NECA Toys and Target. And today, I got a whole host of new action figures to check out and show off for the upcoming Holothon 2022, which starts March 18th. Some have already started hitting stores early, right? But a lot of new figures, various brands, very exciting. The Wolfman, Lon Chaney Ultimate Wolfman, black and white edition. You can grab him along with... Already, the 40th anniversary of the Evil Dead, Ultimate Ash. Demona glides in for the new Gargoyles action figure line. And, of course, a new four-pack of Turtles, in case you missed the old ones. Nice pickup right there. But this guy, this is the one. This is this is cool. We'll talk more about him in just a few. But if you are interested, Holothon starts March 18th. And for those in the U.S. of A., you can head over to Targets and to Target.com. That way, you can grab everything either online or in the store. And for international people's... Starting March 18th, you can head over to holothon.com and grab everything you need as well. So, this is going to be a blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at a ton of new action figures from NECA Toys in conjunction with Holothon 2022. So, let's get started. Now, first and foremost, yes, like I said, I can't believe already, it's the 40th anniversary of the Evil Dead movie. So, Neck is kicking it off with the 40th anniversary line, Ultimate Ash. In case you were wondering, it is a horror movie, as I'm told. Right now. <laughs> Evil Dead, 40th anniversary, nice picture of Bruce Campbell, a.k.a. Ash, on the back. The original Cabin in the Woods movie with the evil presence, of course. Lots of different weapons, lots of different accessories for the Ultimate Ash and... If you open up the box in traditional NECA style, you can see the figure. Nice photo of the figure. Here's everyone involved with the creation of the toy. And here's the barcode as well in case you want to uh, give it a gander inside a Target store. And this is going to be fun as I do have a lot of different ashes to compare him to. So we'll get everything out of the box and have a look-see. And of course, here is Ash out of the packaging. And what's actually pretty cool about this is that if you were looking for just a regular Bruce Campbell figure, that'll meet that requirements as well because... It's pretty dang spot on to the actor's likeness. Now, you do get this recorder from the movie. Excellent paint on it. Very well done. It's basically just a little mini replica. Nothing moves on it. It's got the film, the little reels. Nothing will turn or anything like that. So it's very stagnant, but it's very well done. Nice texturing on the back as well. Very old, very cool looking. And then you get this old school evil lantern. I'm assuming it's an evil lantern since it's an evil cabin. And whatever else, but uh, very well done. Very nicely rendered. Got a little bit of a flicker of a flame inside there. Nothing moves. The handle is pretty sturdy. Nothing opens. I'm sure you could get into it, but it's not meant to do that. Then you have this old shotgun, right? Very cool. This is actually really well done. I'll give it to him all day. It looks like a little mini replica. It's pretty dang cool. Nice weathering on it. Nice paint. Nice brown. And you'll see he holds it well because he's got two hands right he's got well multiple hands but uh, you get the idea you can swap them out and then you get the old-fashioned chainsaw nice red to it it's very nicely done this is NECA right there on <laughs> there nice little personal touch right very rough it's beautifully rendered so I'll give it to him all day you got the little rip cord and everything else so yeah pretty dang cool then you get an axe not much to say about the axe of course it's got a nice handle to it but the nice thing about all these accessories and weapons is that, I mean, if you didn't want to use it for Ash, I'm sure you could find other figures to use it with, right? Hint, hint, wink, wink. And he also comes with a set of three head portraits. You have the standard looking up, right? Maybe what's he looking at up there? You have the McFarlane-esque looking to the side head portrait, right? I would say, if anything, they look like Bruce Campbell. If you said, okay, this is Evil Dead, Bruce Campbell, yada, yada. I like the numbers on the inside just in case. You go, oh, yeah, like uh, head portrait number two. But I would say it's a little Uncanny Valley in some instances, but, uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's Ash for me. It's, it's close enough. Because the actual figure, I would say, this head portrait does a pretty fantastic job of capturing the actor's likeness. Out of the three heads, this one is numero uno to me, as you can see, right? It's just certain things here and there. That's all I'm going to say. But nicely detailed, nice folds in all the clothes, nice paint everywhere. The belt's painted. Nice brown on the pants. Nice shoes. A little bit weathered. He's running through the forest trying to escape all the evil, right? So you gotta have a nice pair of shoes going on. Nice wrinkles, nice folds. 
Everything looks great. Little bit of a, a mishap right there, right? Out of everything, I'll point that out because, uh, you know, people loves to see that. But, uh, yeah, if anything, that was the only blemish on him. But, you know, standard articulation, nothing to go like, oh, my God, you're breaking new grounds, but then nothing to say like, oh, he's hindered at all. One thing I will tell you, didn't have to heat this guy up whatsoever. Again, carrying forth with most NECA toys recently, they've gotten really good at implementing that. So very much a very well-articulated figure, and nothing that I'm going to go, oh, you know, you got to break or anything like that. So he's got single jointed knees and the elbows. you got the feet rock. And, you know, the main part about figures like this is can they hold the weapons? Can they hold and do the poses that I want to see? That would be standard for an Evil Dead Ash figure. And, yeah, I can definitely tell you that he holds all the weapons beautifully. And he photographs beautifully for those of you that want to take photos of the figure. And including the, the chainsaw, right? That's That's like... A staple right there that's got to work and i can tell you that it definitely does and you get him all kinds of poses and stands and everything else so he looks really cool especially when holding let's say the lantern the shotgun he just looks like he's going out to blow up some deadites and yeah in terms of the posability of this figure i think that he works really well not much to do with the whole recorder but you know you can put a foot on it make, make it cool i don't know whatever you want to do when you compare him to other ash figures i'll tell you this all day i have a few and i really like the evil dead series but i like that because i have marvel zombies i like putting let's say this ash with him or even this more zombified looking ash those work really well so to have a more normal ash now out of all my ashes I don't need any more ashes, so we're good on the ash, but you get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, like I said, I mean, if you wanted to put him with zombies, Marvel, and or deceased, he's going to look quite good. So he is at that 7-inch mark, and he can get eaten or, or stop the zombie invasion, or hey, put him in other movies, whatever you want to do. It's a really cool figure. I highly recommend him, so if you are interested, keep an eye out on your Target shelves a coming soon. And of course, continuing on, we have the Lon Chaney, the Wolfman Ultimate Universal Monsters figure. Now, keep in mind, this is the black and white version, as you can see on the side of the box. Don't let the poster fool you. It's the black and white version, especially when you turn it on the back. You get to see a very Lon chaney figure right there. And you got the Wolfman open up the box. And here's everyone involved with the creation of this particular figure, along with the barcode if you want to go ahead and and scan it at Target. So we're going to get him open. I get some of my other Universal Monsters, and we'll see how he compares. Because, well, here's everything out of the box already, right? Don't adjust your TV screens, of course. He is a black and white figure. I just kind of threw some of those old-timey lines on there. Just give it a little of a cell dirt, a little film dirt going on. But uh, in either case, I mean... I'll give it to him all day. We'll say, Evil Dead aside, these head portraits are fantastic. I mean, those look like they leapt right off the silver screen. That is pretty, pretty dang good. I have to give it to him all day right there. I love the snarling, more subdued, right? Works for both in terms of poses. Along with the head portraits, you do get a pair of werewolf feet. And the cool part about this figure is that you can go from Talbot to Wolfman or Mid Transformation. I'll show you all that in just a second. Along with some werewolf hands, only one pair of werewolf hands, right? So they do work. A couple extra hands would have been nice, just saying, in terms of the werewolfness. You do get three hands as far as human go, which are nicely rendered. Now, this is cool. Like I said, with the Evil Dead and all the weapons and everything else, well, you get a bear trap. And not only is it a bear trap, it's actually a functional. Bear trap. Now, it's not going to slam shut, but if you push down on the, the pad, right, this can open up and you can close the trap up. So in that sense, that is really well done. I totally dig that. I like that you have a functional bear trap figure. And again, if you didn't want to use it with the Wolfman, feel free to use it with whatever else is in your collection. But nice paints, nice details. It's got that whole black and white look to it, along with the werewolf cane. This has got great spooky detail on it as well. You need the Wolfman came right, to beat up some werewolves and whatnot in the movie, whatever you want to say. And along with the Wolfman, you do get a stand for posability. And then, yeah, you get a really nice Larry Talbot-looking Lon Chaney. I think the head portrait is pretty much there, I would say. I I'm not going to tell you that, oh, I know what Lon Chaney looks like on a 24-7 daily basis. 
It's good enough for me in terms of uh, what I'm thinking of. And yeah, the folds, everything, NECA, pure fashion, right? Stylized, very cool, nice bottom of the feet, rolled up cuffs, got some cankles going on, right? <laughs> hey, it works. Go watch the movie. You see the actor. Yeah, it works in that sense. But yeah, nice folds everywhere. It's just a very black and white figure. And for this particular style, the Universal Monsters, it definitely works. Standard articulation. You get all the mobility you want from a guy in uh, uh, mid-transformation of werewolfism, right? And the feet and the cankles and everything else will spin. <laughs> so it works in that sense. So very well done on this. But, oh man... He got bit, so he's going to be transforming, right? Pull off all the pieces. And you do get one beautiful-looking Wolfman figure. I give it to him all day. If you're a huge fan of Universal Monsters, I think you're going to be very happy with this guy. From the look of the hands, the fur, it really does capture. Now, it's it's a, it's a corny, right? It's cornball. If you, you know, I'm into CGI and all that kind of stuff. You may not get this. But for old schoolness... That's a pretty dang good looking Wolfman. And like I said, you get all the different poses. You watch the movies, walking through the forest. He's doing the whole growling thing. You know, goes after a cemetery worker. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, he, this figure will achieve all those different poses. And the stand will help you. You can kind of get him up on his feet. Kind of go a little bit of that walking style. He's lurching for it. He's kind of stalking his prey kind of thing. So yeah, on your shelf, he should fit in quite well if you wanted to go that route. One nitpick, I will tell you, though. I wish his head could go back just a little bit more so that you could give the full, like, oh, like howling at the moon thing. Because when he's in mid-transformation, this is where that figure really starts to shine. I give it to him all day. You can have him holding the cane. He's got one human hand. He's got the whole werewolf hand, one human leg. However you want to display him, it'll definitely work. Put him in the bear trap, right? You can definitely do that. Ouch, that hurts, he says, right? That's the facial expression for when this works. I think the two expressions definitely work with this figure. Now, if you have some of the other Universal Monster figures that they've been putting out, most specifically the black and white. I don't have the mummy yet, but I do have the black and white version and the color version of Frankenstein. I think these two go well together. Heck, if you, if you wanted to put them in the uh, Evil Dead universe and have Ash going up against the uh, Universal Monsters, you could totally do that too. And again, all the facial expressions really work. Ninja Turtles, Universal Monsters, sure, why not? If I could be completely honest with you, though, I will say this. In terms of what they're doing with the Universal Monsters, this is a great-looking figure, but I think I really do like the more colored versions better because it goes with more stuff. Not to say if your whole collection is like the Black and White series, it's going to look great, but that would be my only nitpick with this figure. Otherwise, it's fantastic. But I think for me personally, the colored version of the Universal Monsters by NECA is my way to go. And of course, next up, we have the brand new NECA Toys' Disney Gargoyles line. The Angel of the Night, or how she's better known, Demona. This is the ultimate action figure for her. Beautiful artwork on the front of the box. Nice photos of the figure on the sides and on the back. It shows you everything that this figure will come with. And yeah, I like the looks of those figures right there. Huh? From when I reveal them, shameless plug. Here's everyone involved with the creation of the Demona action figure. And here's the barcode as well. She's uh, starting to hit Target store shelves now. Open up the flap on the front of the box. You get a nice photo of the figure and you get to see the figure herself. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited for Demona because here is everything taken out of the packaging. And you do get a lot of nice weapons. Weapons, very show-specific, some swap-out hands, faceplate or two. Talk about more of that in just a few, but I just love how they're bringing back the Gargoyles, man. That was such a great show. It's on Disney Plus, too, by the way. She does have her giant wings. I, I <laughs> That's my only qualms with this line, but we'll talk about more of that in just a second. But yeah, she's got her wings, along with not so much a head portrait, but an interswappable faceplate, right? So yeah, I would say that's a definitely Demona right there. With some real earrings there. She's got a whole shoebox full of dangly ones, right? And yeah, very nicely rendered. Two little pegs on the back just kind of slides right on. I'll show you how everything works in just a few. But nice gold on the crown parts. Then you have interswappable hands. You've got uh, finger trigger hands. you got claw hands for when you want to mess up a hunter or two, right? And then you have some fisted hands. The one thing about the fisted hands, 
is that I think the paint gets a little heavy and gets a little sloppy right there, as you can kind of see. It kind of gets muddled. But she does come with very show-specific blasters. Damona always has these huge, makes-no-sense, vacuum cleaner sci-fi weapons. And this one walked straight out of the cartoon, which is awesome. And if you don't want to blast anything, it works as a nice deflect to a Hudson sword. Just FYI. But it does have some nice detail all over it, nice weathering. Again, it just, it really fits with the look, as does this gun or cannon or missile launcher especially when you aim it at goliath right that'll uh, that'll definitely work but again nice paint very science fiction he's got a little scope right there on the side i just wish it projectile launched something that would have been awesome you also can cast a spell or two with the grimorum arcanorum very nice detail on the front right there nice paint overall looks kind of like uh, the evil dead book right <laughs> very cool and then it's got this little strap right you kind of open it up and then the book th this is what's cool this is why i like the little tension and detail you get it going and, and it opens up right there right so you get little pages they're all tattered and torn they got holes in the pages got a little writing little spells right in case you want to do some damage or reverse some damage whatever this i didn't know after playing with this until i did this video the front actually opens too so you get uh, you get three pages we'll just say but again nice paint overall i love how tattered everything looks it looks like an old-fashioned book and a very cool spell book that only demona would have right and then you kind of just close it up and bingo bango nice grimorum right there the figure itself all day as i said it's got a great screaming snarling head this is how i see demona she is always peeved right they, never a time never an episode where she's not upset so very cool nice rendering giving some detail to her clothes right or very little clothes we'll just say loincloth and coverings and whatever else but it works in the sense of the sculpts what they're doing the over designs of these figures she's got some jewelry right nice little Jewel right there, along with her traditional armband that she has. Very cool. Nice attention to detail. I, of course, would expect that. She's got her great hair. Nice red locks right there. And you can see this is where the wings will clip in. Now, the hair is very flexible. So that works, especially as you'll see when you put the wings on. The tail fits in, plugs in right there. You got the bendy wire tail. The tails are extremely integral to these figures because they're very good at helping them stand the gargoyles always walk more on their hind feet you can make this one do this in terms of having her really stay still you'll find a good sweet spot between the two but like i said the tail really helps some aspects of the legs just go easy you might want to heat this figure up she's a little bit stuck in some sense but nothing that's too crazy that was going to snap or break or anything like that but i always say go easy you don't want to break anything nice rotation in the head even with all that hair right you'll get some nice movement out of her she can shimmy and shake and then as you can see this is how the face portrait goes you kind of just push up at the chin it unplugs that's frightening in and of itself right there and then you take the one you want to use just line it up with the peg holes push it in and bingo bango yeah it stays it's not coming out doesn't fall out it stays in there quite well so she does look good nice face on her both portraits are really well done she has some upper diaphragm rotation right there as you can see not much of an ab crunch maybe goes back more than it goes forward you get her arms going all the way up if you desire she does have a bicep swivel she does have double jointed elbows again just go slow on them you don't want to snap anything do anything just go slow easy on them her wrists will swivel she does have a waist as well it's nicely hidden within the belt she can kick out the loincloth doesn't really hinder her much in terms of uh, maybe moving forward but out to the sides and everything else yeah you'll be fine double jointed knees again go easy as i've been saying and then she's got like the feet the haunches the toes those will all swivel and move with you so she's got peg holes as well if you need to do that again utilize the tail for maximum posability when standing her and then here come the wings <laughs> the wings are the only thing i've talked about they just kind of snap in but man does that make a beautiful looking demona figure for your gargoyles collection the wings are very beautiful they got purple on the back side they have like little teal blue tones with the black it really does work little texturing effects they're very cool right hands down they ratchet they move they can go up they can go down so you can create a really nice looking posed demona for your shelf i'm very happy to say the weapons work 
They really do everything, you know, get the scope up to her eye, holding them. Does look cool, and it looks like she stepped right out of the show. They're not overly cartoon, but they're very cartoon accurate, and I totally dig that. This particular weapon, I'll tell you all day. If you look at the box, I don't even know if they know how to pose it. This is what I could do with it. She holds it, but then it's like, where does she actually hold this, right? The Grimorum, she holds that well all day. Very, very cool. She's going through. She's going to cast some spells, maybe reverse age. Who knows? Whatever she wants to do, hanging out with Macbeth. They're always doing something weird, those two, right? Makes me wonder. But uh, yeah, very cool looking. When you pair her up with Goliath, she looks great all day. All these gargoyles look great. You'll see Thalog in just a second. It's... The wings. The wings are so ridiculously big. If you've seen my prior videos on the gargoyles, they're precisely, with the wings out and everything else, they're precisely one detolf shelf wide. And that's even if you can get them in with all the angles and such. But in terms of scale, they all go together. And now I know I'm thinking why NECA did uh, Goliath first and then did Thalog, because now you have the true love triangle right here where uh, she doesn't even know who she wants to be with. Everyone pretty much got with Demona in that show. But you remove the wings and you get a better idea, better understanding of the scale. And they go well together. And she will go really well with Thalog. I think that's actually, well, until he died. You know what? Whatever. I mean, at one point she was with Brooklyn as well. So that was that future episode. But, you know, it, it works for yourself. Especially you got Goliath off in the corner. But what's he worried about? He's got uh, Elisa Maza. So I'll tell you this all day. Really nice accessories, really nice paint, nice articulation. The wings are gonna not gonna be for everybody, right? They'll go either way. But in either case, if you're into the Gargoyles line, this will definitely be another great figure to add to your Gargoyles collection. Now, moving from one Saturday morning cartoon to the next, we have the new four pack of the NECA Toys' cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures, which is good. For a lot of people that are, one, getting into the line, or two, may have missed some specific Turtles of the past. This is now the fourth iteration released. We'll say to retail, they did have the SDCC packs, but really nice sets overall if you did miss the previous Turtle Bros. Let's say that. And if you look closely, you get some upcoming uh, teases to some upcoming TMNT figures, a lot of them on the horizon. And these do feature the swap out expressions. It's actually pretty cool. I'm glad that they chose to go this round with these. And then here's everyone involved with the creation of these particular turtles. And here's the barcode as well, if you wanna go ahead and scan them in the store. And yeah, this is gonna be great. Like I said, this is not my fourth round of the Turtle Bros. We'll get them all open, see what accessories they have, and see if it's worth your time and money. And lo and behold, here's everything out of the packaging. Amazing how editing works these days. It will take you quite some time to get everything out and make sure you get everything out. I mean, really, of the box because uh, a lot of the times maybe get stuck to the tape or something like that but you do get some cool accessories like some turtle communicators right there nice paint overall really nicely rendered two in the box so you can have two open or two closed so you get a total of four basically but uh, yeah they're very cool and they look like they walk straight out of the show you have a mutagen canister as well this one could have been done just a little bit better. It's a little bit muddled here and there with the paint. Not the best. You have Michelangelo's, or you could just say the grapple for any of the turtles. Nice string on it. Love when they do string accessories, right, with rope. This will open up at the top, and then you can fling it around and pull yourself up on the Channel 6 building, whatever you want to do. Then you have uh, Michelangelo's attachment accessory. So if you spin it while it's on his nunchucks, it looks like it's spinning around. Very nice effect, works well. And you do get a bevy of extra hands. The only downside to this is that you get a ton of extra hands, but you got to split it between the four characters. But each character just needs two hands, right? You get two pizza boxes. Each one's got a missing slice of pizza. This one says Vinny's, the other one says Ninja Pizza. I do wish the boxes could close. I wish they could change that up a little bit. And you get one pizza slice, and uh, it's got the hole in it for you can put it around Raph's side. I'll show you that in just a few. Now with the heads, right? So each turtle basically comes with two head portraits with their corresponding bandana. However, you can pop out the eyes from the lower part of the mouth. It's actually pretty simple. You can see inside there. Each one does have an articulated bandana, which the paint is okay. I mean, it's kind of chips a little bit inside the actual joint, but it works for the most part. Then you just push up and they basically just swap out easy peasy. So you don't like that expression. You could take Donatello's here, 
and take Donatello's eyes or what out, and you swap it with Mikey's and swap it with Donnie's. Now Donnie's got that face portrait. And I mean, yeah, it's pretty self explanatory. You get the idea. You can do it with Leo, you can do it with Raph, you can do anything you want. Multiple expressions achieved. Because with Donatello, in some cases, you need that determined face on him. He's doing machines. So. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, right? He does have weapon storage. I'll give it to him all day. That's very cool. And he does have his bow staff. And it looks and displays really nicely. The joints are pretty fluid, minus the elbows. All the elbows. Also, for keeping it more of like that matte look, he does have a few blemishes here and there. It's almost like paint stains on the face. Mostly on the face for all these guys, just an FYI. And you simply just undo the bow and you can slip it right in the back for easy bow weapon storage. So it's a really nice looking Donatello, nice green to him. And he, again, you can swap out the heads, put on the more scaredy cat Donatello, which, you know, for the old cartoon show, that definitely works. Maybe uh, uh, Shredder's taking over the Channel 6 build. He always tries to do that. Who knows? Raphael, he's the uh, rude one. Remember, he's got kind of the same kind of stainage in some instances here and there. He comes with both of his size. Now, I'll tell you honestly, when they do the re-releases of these figures, even though it's not 100% cartoon accurate, I would like some weapon storage for not only Raph, but also Michelangelo. You can tuck them into the sides, but, you know, the old Playmates, you know, it just would be nice to have some updated storage here and there again the joints all work except for the elbows just kind of go easy on the elbows. that's the only joint on these guys for whatever reason all four turtle bros that get a little bit stuck on you but yeah considerable more movement and everything else for these turtle bros as opposed to previous releases and like i said you can take the pizza slice and you put it down over his side and it's pretty cool right that way he can throw it at you because he's rude just like in the opening credits scene right Leonardo, he comes with his two katanas, and of course you can swap out his head portrait for any of the other expressions, and just to point out, all the turtles do have a bit of a waist swivel, you can do that, the katanas, that's another thing with the weapon storage, Donatello's works well, but these are still kind of a pain to get in there, I really wish it was a little bit more fluid, they're just, it's a very tight, tight grip for uh, sheathing these swords, so I do wish eh, they just slid in just a little bit easier. Just going to tell you that. Michelangelo, he's a party dude. Hey, he's such a happy guy, right? He's got his awesome nunchucks, real chains. They work well. They look great. They all have that really nice green to him. He doesn't really have any of the stains on his head portraits. Weapon storage. Now, you can put them in there, and that works for the most part. But again, like I said, eh, you know. Take some liberties if you really wanted to. And then for his nunchuck effect, simply just pop this off and go ahead and plug the spinny whirly parts right there. And now you've got a uh, really cool effect, right? He's spinning around. He's a fellow chucker, right? So it does look good. The effect is achieved. He looks like he's having a great time. Give him a slice of pizza, whatnot. Yeah, it's a nice turtle set overall, especially, again, if you've missed them in the past. And to compare to all the other retail releases, this is now my fourth set of Ninja Turtles, as you can tell. Now, you have the more early episodes of the TMNT, you have the new style guide ones, you have the disguise, and then you have the older style guide ones. And really, if you look at newer to older, it's a matter of just having those head portraits that swap out. Yeah, some of the joints on the earlier one are a little bit more stuck. These ones, I can tell you, are a lot more fluid to use. But mostly for the paint, the green, and everything else, they're pretty much the same. As opposed to, let's say, the first round of the Turtles, the more early episodes. The earlier ones have the cell shade in this, whereas these new ones don't have that going on. There's still that cartoony green, but they don't have that paint differentiation. And of course, as you can see, the disguised Turtles, I kept the clothes on. That's how I display these anyways. They keep the weird, creepy human pig face masks on, so... It works in that sense. And all these turtles, rest assured, will go with any of the other releases of turtles, mutants, bad guys, whatnot. So again, to reiterate, if you've missed out, if you've seen, you know, to be honest, the prices on some of these aftermarket turtles, which I do not recommend paying ever, 
this isn't a bad price for the set. Yes, you are getting less accessories. That's one thing I will say. I wish they had a little bit more accessories going on because that's what NECA does so well. But in either case, yeah, it's a nice set of the four turtles. And when you compare him to all the other NECA releases for the Holothon, that's just a lot of fun. So throw a Ninja Turtle into the mix and you got all your bases covered. So if you're in the need for some turtles, these will definitely scratch that turtle itch. And then, of course, last but not least, you have my favorite of all the figures we've looked at. Mainly because it's a brand new character for the Turtle line, right? One that we have seen in action figure form before, but this one is truly Mirage all the way around. This is Sal, or Professor Honeycutt, or, as he's better known to everyone, the Fugitoid. The original Fugitive Robot. Now you get the name. Wink, wink. Very awesome. Look at that. Cell shaded graphic glory paint going on right there. Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Very nice, cool photos of the figure on the back of the packaging, including one of a Ninja Turtle. Hopefully, they'll re release those at some point because it looks like they're going to be having some more characters that come in. They've already kind of shown these off, but it's nice to see them using the original artwork, as is Eastman's artwork of the Fugitoid on the sides of the box. Here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure, and here's the barcode as well for when Fugitoid starts to hit shelves, and you can scan and have them look for you in the store. And just as a heads up, there will be a signature edition version of the Fugitoid. Fugitoid will be the same, same exact weapons, everything. It's a little bit of a different box, and then it will also come with a collector card that is signed by Kevin Eastman himself. Very excited about this guy, as you could probably tell. So enough talking, let's get him open. And here he is all out of the packaging. And I'll tell you this, he's the Fugitoid, and he's basically a Ninja Turtle accessory pack all in one. Now, to give you the download, the Cliff Notes version of who the Fugitoid is, you have at some point in the early Ninja Turtle Mirage comics, they go into space, right? They meet up with Fugitoid. Fugitoid kind of had his own series going on at the time. Very cool one-off kind of thing. There is a scientist named Professor Honeycutt. He has a robot helper named Sal. Sal goes out in the field. He gets damaged. Professor Honeycutt goes out to help him. And lo and behold, they get struck by lightning. Before Professor Honeycutt dies... His mind gets transported into the body of Sal. And when the military that Honeycutt was working for finds his charred corpse, they say, wait a minute, that robot must have killed Professor Honeycutt. And the chase is on. You get what I mean? And at some point when the turtles get transported into the home world, the Triceratons, all that jazz. And together they team up and uh, it's a pretty interesting, graphic, bloody comic. It was definitely fun to read as a child. Totally didn't mess me up whatsoever but this new fugitoid is really cool now he does come with the let's say triceraton handcuffs or you know restraints it's very cool to see it. it's beautifully recreated i actually really like that they did that hopefully it fits on my ninja turtle figure that's uh, we're definitely going to try the guns are straight out of the comic book right it's very cool nice blues Nice blacks, very graphic, very Jack Kirby, right? Very cool to see that, as is this weapon. I like all the straight lines. Everything just looks crisp and nice. Everything's painted beautifully to the nines. Really standout weapons right there. And then you have this weapon. This is the Triceraton Blaster. It's a very classic weapon. The Ninja Turtles use it to escape multiple times. It's very cool. Eh? They've, they've done a beautiful job there. You get extra hands for Professor Honeycutt. Gun holding hands, fleeing hands, right? He's usually running away. That's the whole sitch. Now, this one's not really Fugitoid related. This is more from a one-off Donatello issue where Donatello meets the artist, Jack the King Kirby, or just Kirby. Be careful with these little black nodes right here, whatever they are. Just go easy on it. Really hoping, I know it fits the Fugitoid, but I'm really hoping that it fits my Ninja Turtle figures. That's going to be awesome. And then you have the Fugitoid himself. And the way that it's painted... Just the look. We've had many different Fugitoid figures in the past, but this guy rocks that glorious graphic-looking paint style, and I just think that they nailed it. He's got the big glowing yellow eyes. He's got the one face portrait. That's all he needs. He's one expression. He doesn't change. He's a robot, right? Every little detail on this guy is beautifully painted. I just love what they did. He just looks like a living Kevin Eastman art piece it's just very cool especially when you have them in hand you'll see it and 
he's got some interesting articulation to him as well. As far as the head goes, you get plenty of mobility. He'll go up, he'll go down, he'll go side to side. So he's very cool. He's got the neck, which then goes to the ball joint for the head. So lots of movement, lots of rotation in that sense. The arms, because he's an android, right? They'll mostly go up, and they'll go down. But as you can see, he doesn't have any joints as far as in the knees or in the elbows. His hands will swivel. You can swap those out. But he has bendy wire, arms, and legs. And when I first saw this, I was like, oh, man, is that going to do anything to the paint? I can tell you honestly so far. I really went to town, flexing it up and down and left and right, trying to see. For the most part now, no, no problems. What happens in the future? Can't really tell you how you do it, how you flex them, how you take care of your figure. It's all up to you. But as of right now and really working with this guy, it seems to work. He is a little bit loose in the top diaphragm joint, a little bit looser than I would prefer. I'll be honest with you. It's not terrible, but it's also not like tight. Yeah, it's a little bit tighter. You know, he'll kind of rotate there as well. Just like the shoulders, the legs will go up and down. He has bendy wire knees, legs, which do form fit the aesthetics of Fugitoid, right? He'll swivel. He's got nice treads on the bottom of his feet. It's just it's a very cool figure. Again, NECA does this so well. All the cartoon figures look like they walked right out of the cartoon. He walked right out of the comic book. He holds all the weapons beautifully. In terms of the comic, Fugitoid doesn't really use these guns, right? Mostly the Ninja Turtles and everyone else that they're fighting. That's who uses these weapons. Even their strengths. At no point does the Fugitoid get restrained. It's all the Ninja Turtles behind their back, so we'll definitely check it out. And also, getting him into this position with the restraints, with the bendy wire, is a real pain. And I'll tell you this honestly. The whole time I'm doing it, I'm thinking, oh man, this is going to scratch the paint. I had no problems scratching the paint, but it's largely a pain in the butt to get his arms into this just as it is. Then you have all these guns and weapons and the Donatello Kirby machine. Hey, Lul looks great. It all fits. It all works with him. So if you wanted to put this device on his arm, it'll definitely hold it oh so nicely. If it's from another comic I'm not aware of, so be it. But as far as what I know, yeah, that comes directly from the Donatello issue. And if you have the old Mirage Turtles that NECA did years back... Well, he can hold that Triceraton Blaster oh so well. I absolutely love the way that that looks. He can hold all the guns, right? It's basically, like I said, it's a Ninja Turtle accessory pack. So if you do have these figures, hey, oh so great. And honestly, with the Triceraton restraints, once you pop the hands off the original Mirage neck of Turtles, it actually does fit. And it, again, it looks like it came right out of the comic book, right? It looks really awesome especially if you have some triceratons dang they look good all put together right you're just missing that little breathing apparatus that kind of uh, goes into the turtle's mouth now in the actual comics the restraints are actually behind their backs unfortunately with the reach and everything else you're not going to be able to do that but if you want to go ahead and restrain your turtles front wise definitely works but I'll tell you what actually does look pretty dang awesome. Straight from the comic book cover, yes, it will fit onto your NECA Toys' Mirage Ninja Turtles figure. You kind of have to just kind of wiggle it onto his arm, just kind of shove the arm in there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, once you got it, you get it going. God dang, that is just so cool that they put that in with this figure. And that way, yeah, you can use it with your other prior released Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And likewise with the other two guns, they'll hold those beautifully as well. Straight from the comic books they are. If you have the prior release cartoon Triceratons with these turtles, with this Fugitoid, I mean for the most part they'll work. They're not exactly comic book accurate, but they're close enough. They're really cool Triceratons. If you just collect the cartoon turtles, I'd say that this Fugitoid goes really nicely. It just fits with that whole graphic aesthetic. And just like the old Playmates toy. That's why I said yeah, there's so many iterations. But the original Playmates one, you can see what they kept, what they changed. But that is Professor Honeycutt all the way around all day. And if you really want to jazz up your collection, right? You can have the older Playmates toys, Xanarmon Turtle Space Cruiser. Uh, that fits really nicely with the whole Mirage aesthetic. Fugitoid goes well. You could put both figures in the cargo hole if you wanted to go that route, or you could put him up front flying the spaceship. It doesn't matter. But in either case, that's a really cool looking Fugitoid.
So that's going to wrap it up for my look at all the Holothon offerings thus far. A lot of great toys, a lot of great brands, a lot of cool things happening. Don't forget, Holothon officially starts March 18th. So depending on when you see this video, there might be stuff out now, right? Maybe check the stores, just FYI. Or uh, they will be hitting your local Target stores soon. Now remember, if you're in the United States, you can hit up Target or you can go on the Target app. And for all the international peoples, you head over to holothon.com and you can grab all the different toys like each and every one of these that we went over today. And I want to say thank you to the people over at NECA Toys and of course Target for sending these over for the purposes of giving you guys this early fresh look. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly remember, bring on the turtles, baby, and then the gargoyles. And... And just keep those coming. That's cool with me. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.